May God bless us in the hearing of his word, which is a real gift. We're going to hear a real contrast to not hearing in today's lessons. So stay tuned. God bless you now as we sing our opening hymn, 528, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, as we'll be following Divine Service Setting 1 in the hymnal at page 151. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, 
and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by the authority of his word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes. In the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord has kept those who are bowing down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. the Lamb. 
merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. As you are seated, we continue with the word, the service of the word, hearing from the Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 through 7a. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle reading is the beginning of a series in the book of James. Today, from chapter 2, reading verses 1 through 10, 14 through 18. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in. And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while well, you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it? My brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works, 
Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I invite you now to stand. We join in the verse followed by the Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel. The basis for today's message, the primary basis, is from Mark chapter 7, reading verses 24 through 37. Glory to you, O Lord. From there Jesus arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know. Yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to the man, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Worship now continues with the singing of the hymn of the day, number 797, Praise the Almighty, my soul adore him. Yes. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Today's message is entitled, In Private Conversation with a Deaf Mute. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way to the back? Yeah. Uh, if so, would you please raise your hand and give me a small wave? <laughs> now, well, it does cross my mind that some of us could feel a little foolish uh, to being doing this simple little exercise. My intent is to underscore something that is so easily assumed. What a wonder it is for us to be able to hear and speak in a language that has meaning for us. How amazing it is to understand and so communicate with one another. This, of course, is essential for life, isn't it? That we can give and receive messages and interpret and understand them opens up a much deeper reality to life. To hear and laugh at a joke. To be soothed by assuring words and calmed by music. To be informed, learn, and be guided, warned of danger, given advice, to give and receive care, to share appreciation, common experiences, needs, to know and affirm, to accept and to love, and to receive these back from others. How vital is communication that we can understand? Of course, there are many challenges to successful communication even for we who can hear reasonably well. Well, let's play make-believe for a moment. Imagine a TV news report. You see a man dressed in Bedouin shepherd's clothing. He stands next to a reporter. Let's get the reporter here. You see his face with an I don't get it expression. His eyes are darting around, looking back and forth at me, then outward toward you, and back in me. And he's distracted by anything that moves. Got that scene? Okay, ready? One, two, three, action. Today we interview a man named Moggy Lawless, a deaf mute. Mr. Lawless, hello, Mr. Lawless. I understand that this is your first time to Redeemer Lutheran Church. Is this true, Mr. Lawless? I'm over here. Uh, would you like me to introduce you to some of the worshipers here today? Moggy, uh, may I call you Moggy? I see you looking around all over the place. Don't worry about the flashing lights over there, Moggy. I need you to try to listen to me. Mr. Lawless, uh, look, look over here. What do you mean? Mr. Lawless, I cannot understand you at all. Well, Mr. Lawless, I hope you have had a, that you have a good day anyway. Well, that's it, folks. As you can see, Mr. Moggy Lawless has consistently withheld comment on these issues. I'm J.P. Osmus reporting. Back to you, Pastor. You know, I can almost feel frustrated just doing this play act. I think you and I both know of times when trying to communicate has not been easy or has miserably failed. Imagine this kind of person being brought to you in reality, and you are responsible for his well-being for the next two weeks. How far would you get communicating with someone who could not speak, nor hear you, nor understand your way of thinking? Or flip it around. Place yourself into the role of Mr. Moggy Lawless. To live as deaf and mute. Or how saddening, frustrating it is to lose the ability to remember, to think. This is also the world of many and their loved ones, and many of us included, 
battling Alzheimer's and dementia. When we don't understand, how can we come to appreciate or participate in what is going on? What a lonely and challenging battle it is to be left out, perhaps to be overwhelmed with that feeling of being left out and forgotten. In private conversation with a deaf mute, left alone to ourselves, this title can also reflect the desperate condition within our souls. We get stuck in private conversations in ourselves. We can talk to ourselves, wish for ourselves, dream for ourselves. But how pitiable. We are wrapped up in ourselves. Even where we try, we face the reality that our love and care for others finally comes short and fails. And with what respect to our love, and with what respect to our love and care for God? When we hear his command, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength before all others, we face this truth. We have fallen short. We have neglected to love and care for him as he deserves, as he commands. Our souls and lives are before him like one who is deaf and mute. We don't get God. We live in a world which promotes a pride of life that, without fail, ends in death. We have, at best, an unsure wishing for more, but do not know the hope, love, and fulfillment of the life that will never end. We are caught up in avoiding or having to cope with growing old. We are befuddled by fears and anxieties. We are fooled by self-deceptions. We may strive to leave some sign to say, I was here, I'm somebody, my life mattered. Most don't want merely to be forgotten. Some simply wish it all to be over. This is the crisis of this broken world and our lives, corrupted by sin, bound in spiritual death. But God has initiated contact with us, conversation with us. God's word has revealed his knowledge about us. His word unveils the truth as it declares by his law, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one is righteous, not even one. The soul that sins shall surely die. Sin pays its wage, death. It is given for a man once to die, then to judgment. Yet God's conversation through the law has only begun to reveal his greater purpose to restore us to be his holy people. Let's return to the idea of an eyewitness interview. This time, the reporter is Saint Mark. He and the other evangelists captured the news of Jesus' miracle to feed the crowd of 5,000 men and their families with five loaves and two fishes. This Jewish Messiah now is touring away from Israel into Gentile territories, meeting the people there too. Mark reports this unique footage from the Decapolis, the Greek-influenced Ten Cities region, east of the Jordan River. Got the scene? Perhaps this is how Mark might report it today. Okay? Ready? Three, two, one, action. Hello from Decapolis. We have been following Jesus, whom more and more people are believing is the long-awaited Messiah. We now bring you the latest on this development. Earlier today, 
We taped these residents of Decapolis who brought to Jesus a deaf man who was also diagnosed with a rarely heard of term, magilalis, a Greek word which means hardly talking, dumb, tongue-tied. When I asked these locals what happened with this man, they responded, we wanted Jesus to lay a hand on our friend. He's had a hard time in life. We hoped Jesus might help him. When I asked, what did he do? And did he help? They stated, we are still waiting to find out. Jesus took him away from the crowd where we were standing. And that's where it stands at the moment. This is John Mark reporting. Recall the interview with Magi Lalas. Just think what a challenge it is to help someone like him. Where do you start? Imagine what it was like for Jesus to hear the people's request. Please lay your hand on him. Don't you think we'd like to try to do just that? Uh, fix it in a snap? But look at what Jesus did. Hear this report based on evidence presented by St. Mark. Jesus took the man away. Here he is, the greatest communicator of all time, and he is in private conversation with a deaf mute. Once taken aside, the man's attention is riveted on Jesus alone. Then Jesus puts his fingers into the man's ears. He can understand. Jesus intends to do something about his deafness. The next focus is on the muted tongue as Jesus spits and touches the man's tongue. This indicates the removal of the impediment to his speech. Next, Jesus gave an upward look to heaven. The man follows Jesus' eyes. His help is from God above. Then Jesus gives a great sigh. The man sees it as his prayer, his request is made to God. The deaf-mute man understands by the sign language of Jesus what he was going to do. Jesus communicated to arouse faith in the man, to receive his gift, which he willed him to have, complete wholeness and healing of his body and soul. After the deaf-mute has been fully prepared, Jesus speaks the Aramaic word. Ephatha, which means be opened. The sound of Jesus' command penetrates the man's deaf ears. He hears the sound of Jesus' word. When he opens his mouth, he speaks plainly. The follow-up, as reported by St. Mark, includes the unexpected request. And Jesus charged them to tell no one but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. What private conversations with the Messiah, our Savior, do you and I acknowledge? God imparts faith through his written word and the sacraments, planted by his Holy Spirit into your heart and mind to believe it. Let these words of God and the fulfillment of his word in the lives of his people lead you to sure and certain faith. St. Mark points beyond the immediate report to the witness later made by St. Peter at Mark chapter 8, verse 29. And Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. Use your tongue to proclaim the goodness and salvation of the Lord. Say with all his people, 
He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. For Jesus did not stay in the Decapolis region and abandon his father's will to offer his life for all. He headed on to Jerusalem. There he tackled our greatest enemy. Death indeed still saddens us. The statement could yet be made. There is no deafness nor any muteness greater than that of death. Anxiety over death and its silent reality still packs its stinging punch. But in Jesus, the living word of God has come among us. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Although we feel abandoned by loss because of death, although we die in this body, the prophet Isaiah's words declare, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. <clears throat> the love of God was poured out in the death of Jesus Christ, his son. He, who like a lamb led to the slaughter, was dumb, took up his life again on the third day. He spoke to death's grave, be opened, and Jesus Christ arose. And as Christ the firstfruits arose, so also shall we and all in the saving faith which is in his name rise to eternal life. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing our great Redeemer's praise, for he has done all things well. Amen. Truly, it is so. I invite you then to stand and confess and make this great good noise of God and all he has done in the confession of the faith according to the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we now continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Heavenly Father, in holy baptism you have caused waters to break forth in the wilderness and made streams in the desert of this world. Open our eyes to this new life in Christ and our ears to hear your word. Free us to walk uprightly and loose our tongues to praise you for this treasure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have made us all heirs of your kingdom through holy baptism, holding the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Keep us from showing partiality and making distinctions among ourselves, and make us rich in good works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, create and sustain in us a lively faith in Christ Jesus. And, as the people brought the deaf-mute person to Jesus, lead us by your Spirit to be active in all good works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help parents to raise up their children to know you as their help and hope, that they may not put their trust in princes in whom there is no salvation. With Gail and Randy, we thank you for the blessing of their new granddaughter, Robin, and pray your blessing to guide the new parents, Alex and Aaron. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our hope in you and ask your blessing for our nation in this time of federal election, that we may be led by leaders who pursue righteousness and fear the Lord. We pray that rulers would change evil ways and rule faithfully by your will and wisdom, that their plans and efforts may be ordered for the welfare of those they govern, and that you would execute your justice for the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, behold graciously the sick and those in any need, especially Emily, Val, Lee and Linda, Maureen, Richard, Phyllis, Klaus and Rita, Shirley Kay, Fern, Pastor Jonathan, Eva's sister Leah and husband Jack, Elsie, Hulda, Lou, Gary P. Also uh, Liam and his family, uh, the grandson of Judy Ray, who was diagnosed with COVID uh, just this past weekend, and all those battling uh, these diseases and illnesses also in their bodies. We acknowledge your care and protection also for the recent travels of Don and Shirley and Audrey M. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that all who come to the Lord's Supper this day would do so in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Amen. Might we bring forward the offering plate? And as we do that, we can stand and sing the offertory. What shall I render? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to And we'll call on the name of the Lord. I will take my and we will on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the
worship then continues with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into the, our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the, the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. for him before distribution. Today, 620, we sing verses 1 through 4. to the Lord's table. O Lord, who serves and heals us with all that you are, you have given. Keep my faith steadfast until that day of your return. Amen. Let us pray. 
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So worship then concludes 620 with verses 5 and 6. Let me praise God's boundless favor, whose own feast of love I savor, bidden by his gracious call. Wedding garments he provides me with a robe of white he hides me, fits me for the Peace of the Lord be with you.